What's up everyone? I know the intro was a little long, but I want to show you how beautiful Lake Tahoe is. This is my first time going there and I'll definitely be going back in the near future. Now the topic of today's video is a Milky Way Vertorama. A Verta what, you might ask? Simply put, it's just a panorama that goes vertical and the technique works well when the Milky Way is perpendicular with the horizon. Now there's several ways you could create a Vertorama. Typically, you would keep the camera in landscape orientation mode with a wide angle lens. Then you take a photo, pan up, take another photo, pan up again until you're satisfied. However, since we're dealing with the Milky Way, I'm going to show you an unorthodox Vertorama technique that I like to use to get sharper stars and cleaner images like the one you see here. Now this photo is only taken with two photos, one for the foreground and one for the sky. So let's just jump into the editing process and I'll show you the benefits of why I did it this way. All right, everybody, now I'm going to show you how I blended the two photos together to create this Vertorama. And let me just go over the details. Now, the foreground was shot with a 35 millimeter lens at f4. My ISO was 1250 and the shutter was 120 seconds. Now, this longer exposure allowed me to get less noise in the image. It created some hot pixels, which will clean up in Photoshop. And um, if you're wondering about light painting, that was done by another photographer and I decided to keep it in this image. I took several photos with and without the light painting and I really liked how this looked. So it kind of added some more dimension to Bonsai Rock and that's why I'm going to stick with this photo. Now you can see the longer exposure gives you um, star trails. So once I did the foreground, I put my camera on a star tracker and using the tracker, I was able to do a 30 second exposure at f3.5 uh, with the 35 millimeter lens and my ISO was 3200. Now, if you don't have a star tracker, don't be discouraged. You could still do this technique um, without it. I just did it because, you know, I, it, just to kind of create the cleanest image possible. But if you don't have a star tracker, you could still take several photos and stack them or you could just take one exposure and then increase your noise reduction, whatever, you know, you know, whatever you have at the time, this will still create a very clean image because your foreground is going to be nice and clean and the um, higher ISO in your sky is not really that noticeable as you might think because of all the stars and everything. So just um, give it a try. Uh, you know, if you don't have a tracker, don't worry about it. So next thing we're going to do is select these two images and we're going to open them in Photoshop. So go to edit in open layers in Photoshop. All right. So we've got our two pictures in Photoshop and uh, since we're creating a Vertorama, we need more space to work with. So I'm actually going to expand the canvas that we're going to be working on. So if you go to image canvas size right now, the height's at 2000. So I'm just going to double this and it's going to make it more than we need, but that'll just give me some extra room to play with. All right. Once you do that, you want to slide down your image. That's the foreground. And I'm just going to bring the sky on top of the foreground just so I could kind of uh, see where I want to place it. Now you don't have to put it exactly where it should line up. We could kind of alter it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, Zoom in here, right there. I'm going to lower the opacity just so I could kind of see where I want to put the sky. Go to edit, free transform. I'm going to tilt it a little bit just to make it a little more vertical. And I'm also going to make it a little bit wider and taller. Now, what I'm also trying to do is make sure the, the um, rock and the horizon line is below my foreground uh, horizon line. If you come a little too high and you see this tree right here is uh, going to be poking out into the foreground, you don't want to do that. And I'll show you actually a fix if that does happen. Um, so let me just finish this. Hit enter. When you're done, 
And you can see this uh, part of this branch is going to be in the foreground layer. When we switch them back, So since that's actually going to show up right here, what I could do is I'll hide the foreground layer. We could zoom in here and we could just take the spot healing brush or the healing brush. Let's start with a spot healing brush and just kind of brush this away. Now it won't be an issue uh, when we go to blend the two photos. Now you could crop now or you could crop it later. Um, I'm going to just grab the crop tool. We'll clear this and drag it up. Drag it to the bottom. So that's going to be our Votorama. And what we need to do now is create a layer mask on the foreground layer, which I have on the top. You're going to take your brush tool, put the hardness on 100, make a size that uh, works for your photo, and make sure your opacity is at 100. And you want to also select black, and this will paint away some of the foreground. Let's zoom in here. Now as you get closer to uh, the horizon line, you're going to have to switch brushes to a smaller brush. You can also use the bracket tools to increase or decrease the size of your brush. Because the exposure values were so close to each other, um, you could already tell how easily this is going to blend together. All right, that's close enough. Now all I have to do is right click, go select a mask, and I could make this brush a little bit smaller. Now you might wanna play with your settings. I'm gonna start my shift edge around zero. I like to put the contrast up to 15 to 25%, and I'll leave smooth and feather very low or zero. And uh, we're just going to brush along the horizon line where the uh, sky meets our foreground. And as you can see, it had no trouble at all blending the two images. So I don't even have to play with these settings. It looks pretty good right off the bat. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, if you want to see. Uh, the mask, all you got to do is hit the back bracket and we can make some adjustments to this. So I want to bring back some of this rock area and take away some of this, um, this sky. So what we're going to do is first we will use the white. We're we have the white selected. So first we're going to do the foreground. And what I'm doing right here is just painting back in some of the foreground that uh, the mask is showing is not 100%. We can zoom in here and really start shrinking the brush and fine tuning this. Now for the sky, all you have to do is flip the color to black but I want to change the hardness and keep it around 15%. And I also want to change the opacity and make that around 20%. And just carefully uh, just brush this back in. And now if you're getting tired of the seeing red, you could switch this back. And you see there's a little bit of a star trail right here. So you just want to get anything that's a star trail out of the image. That's starting to look pretty good. All right, I think that's 
uh, that's blended pretty well so um, I'm good with that that was nice and easy once you're satisfied you could uh, flatten the layers and then we're gonna work from a copy actually I'm gonna make several copies right here the first thing I want to do is kind of fix up a couple things so right in the corner um, I have a little bit of white showing you could just take your healing brush and we just brush right here and that will put some stars back in we also do the same thing with this rock if you don't want that in the picture we'll get rid of that all right next thing I want to do is get rid of these um, these hot pixels that I have in the water so what I want to do is make a copy and for this what we're going to do is go to filter noise dust and scratches okay so when you're dealing with dust and scratches and you're playing around with the radius and the threshold just be aware that you're going to be affecting the stars and any other lights that are in your image so i found a threshold and radius that works well to remove um, a lot of the hot pixels so I'm gonna hit OK now what I want to do is fix what happened to my sky so create a layer mask and we're gonna paint this layer mask all black so select your uh, paint bucket right here make sure this is on black and just uh, you know just tap in the paint now what that did is revealed the layer below which still has the hot pixels in it. So now what we want to do is switch over to the white brush and pick a paintbrush, put hardness on zero and increase the size of our brush and we can make the opacity 100% and we can start painting over the water. Now hit the backslash button to see uh, exactly what you're what we're revealing. Whoops! Make sure you're still on white. And what this is doing is getting rid of all of the hot pixels. Now as we get closer to the stars and um, some of these lights up here, uh, you can still see I some hot pixels. So shrink down your brush and now you can just single out any other uh, hot pixel that you did not get before. All right, so that looks pretty good. You can merge that layer down. So next thing we want to do is um, maybe fix up some of these lights over here. So what I like to do is zoom in and we can either use the healing brush or you can use the clone stamp tool and we're going to select different parts of these, uh, these trees and just kind of get rid of some of these harsh lights that are in this tree area. Now I do like some of them there, like I like some of these trees lit up just to kind of add to the image. So it's kind of personal preference if you want to get rid of them all or, or, uh, or leave them. Um, I'm just going to take away some of this like harsh lighting right here. And I'm pretty much just doing this just so you have an idea of how you could uh, fix your photo. If there's something that's man-made then you don't want it in your photo, how easy it is to get rid of it. Same thing with the lights if you don't want them on the water. Um, actually, I'm going to switch back over to the healing brush and we could easily we could clone out lights if you don't like them. I'm not going to do all of them. I just want to show you that that's a possibility. So once you kind of get the image how you like, let's make another copy. 
and I'm going to show you a couple other adjustments that I might do. You can either try and do a curves adjustment. So maybe you like what it did to the sky, but the foreground came out too dark. We can take our paintbrush tool and paint on the layer mask that was created when we did the curves uh, adjustment. Let's go to 50%. Maybe even change the opacity if it's too much. Uh, another thing I like to do is some dodging and burning. Now this right here is the reflections in the water, so we could also dodge those. Change it to midtones. We'll try and bring out some more detail in the rock in this uh, clear water. And then we could go to shadows for the darker areas. We can switch this to burn and burn in our shadow areas of the Milky Way to exaggerate that. I'm just doing this really quick, just to kind of give you guys an idea. So I'm gonna merge the, those layers. So that's a before. This is after. So this is just some ideas of what you could do. Once you're satisfied with the image, you could flatten it and go to File, Save. Okay, so once you're back in Lightroom, you have the option to do more adjustments. I'm gonna leave it right there if you need to see some uh, Milky Way editing. I have other videos that you could view. Okay, so that pretty much sums up this tutorial. I just want to reiterate that by separating your foreground and your sky, you could get a cleaner and sharper image. It doesn't matter how many photos you use or what lens you use to create this vertorama, just um, make sure you're blending those two together instead of using the same exact settings for each shot uh, you know, as you start with the foreground and work your way up to the sky. Treat them separately and you're gonna get better results and you're gonna sell larger prints that way. So good luck and happy shooting.